me uh, invite uh, Dennis to give some uh, concluding remarks to this part of uh, the round table. Uh, Dennis, as you know, uh, is a veteran uh, peace negotiator and, and has a lot of experience in all of these things. He also, as was mentioned, uh, made an important submission to the court. So uh, Dennis, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you. Look, in, in many ways, it's hard to add to what I've heard because this, the statements that have been made are remarkably compelling and eloquent uh, as it relates to what has happened at the ICC and how destructive this action is. So let me make maybe four brief, very brief comments. The first one relates to why I made a submission in the first place. Uh, in looking at the ICC decision, I have to say and this is not diplomatic exaggeration, uh, I was flabbergasted. This, the, the court was basically making a decision to assume authority based on the Oslo Accords. Now, as someone who was intimately involved in these negotiations, the one thing I knew for certain was that the Palestinians were not in a position to have authority, so they couldn't therefore grant it to the, to the ICC. Uh, I joked with someone at the time, you almost have to turn yourself into a pretzel to follow the logic of the ICC argument that creates why it now has authority. So I, I here again, I think this is a point well worth recalling, and I'm going to bring it back when I come to what is really my sort of concluding thought. So that's kind of observation number one. Observation number two, which again has been stated over and over again in, in terms of discussions, if we want to see international institutions play a role, especially because there's so many issues that cannot be dealt with only on a national basis. We face so many problems internationally that don't respect borders. Therefore, international institutions are important. They need to have a kind of vitality. They need to have a kind of credibility. Uh, if they're going to deal with these, what amounts to universal transnational threats. And the problem with what the ICC has done, uh, it has made it very clear it's acting on the basis of being a political instrument, not a legal instrument. I mean, the arguments that I've heard others make, uh, as I said, are compelling. And what we've seen is the ICC become a politicized tool in the service of dealing with a conflict, which betrays what its cause was supposed to be. Tal Becker said it best, it was supposed to deal with mass atrocities, not to become a party to conflicts. Uh, and that's precisely what it has become, at least with this decision. Now, again, one, it's important to, for the friends of the ICC to persuade the new prosecutor that if you want the ICC to play the role for which it has uh, an, un, you know, an unmistakable need, then don't politicize the institutions because you will destroy it. Uh, and we will lose an institution that should exist internationally to deal with mass atrocities. That has to become, I think, part of the, the presentations that are made to the new prosecutor. Uh, the third point relates to, Mike, what you were raising in particular, with Nicole did as well, the impact this will have on trying to deal with the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. For the Palestinians, this is another example of trying to avoid responsibility. Nicole, you talked about having accountability, not being accountable. This is a way to say, you know what? We don't have to deal with resolving this political conflict. We'll get someone else to do it for us. We'll get someone else, we'll, get, we'll use this legal instrument uh, to basically not only pressure Israel, put it on the defensive, but we'll use a legal instrument that also denies the Israelis the ability to engage in self-defense, uh, which, Mike, as you were saying, it's pretty remarkable if you go back to 2008, 2009, the PA wanted Israel to take care of Hamas, but had wanted its hands to be completely clean in terms of dealing with it. Uh, the reality is, again, if you're going to resolve this conflict, everybody has to assume responsibilities. This doesn't mean the Israelis don't have responsibilities in the negotiations. Of course they do. Uh, yes, the Palestinians feel largely powerless and they're looking for ways to offset what they see are inherent uh, forms of Israeli leverage. And this is their point of counter leverage. 
The problem is it perpetuates what has been part of the Palestinian narrative, a narrative where they're the victim and they bear no responsibilities. It's up to everybody else. If we want to resolve this conflict, the one thing that has to exist on the Palestinian side is an assumption of responsibilities, a, a readiness to level with their own public, to say we can resolve this conflict, but it's going to require that we have to make some compromises too. It can't be a case where everyone else has to act, the Israelis have to act, all we have to do is receive. That's a guarantee for perpetuating the conflict, not for resolving it. So this, again, those who want to deal with the diplomatic side of this to try to ameliorate this conflict, they have a responsibility to say to the Palestinians, this is not only not the way, but you're going to find no support from us. Now, the, uh, the last point I want to make relates to this issue of, okay, what to do now? And there's been, again, I think a lot of discussion. Uh, let me just say, I think from an American standpoint, what I would like to see the Biden administration do uh, is assign someone the responsibility. Maybe it starts with the Secretary of State designating somebody who will then take the lead with all of our key European friends uh, and sit down and say, all right, let's work out a coordinated approach to deal with the new prosecutor to explain the consequence of this decision, uh, both for the long-term credibility and standing of the ICC, the consequences as it relates to actually setting back the ability to try to ameliorate and then and in time resolve the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Uh, uh, and let's make it very clear that it will have consequences for the relationship uh, of those countries that retain, the, uh, that are financial supporters of the ICC, that are friends of the ICC. Uh, I think there needs to be a common approach. I don't think that this is not a case where everybody just works on their own independently. No, there should be a coordinated approach because the new prosecutor should see how the decision has mobilized an international response against the institution. And that the long-term consequences for the, for the institution uh, are, are quite severe uh, and this is, in a sense, this coordinated approach is designed to save the institution from a decision that was completely misguided, does not have a legal basis, uh, and this is a court that should be governed by a set of consistent legal standards. I think if there is a, a deliberate, coordinated effort with a new prosecutor, the new prosecutor can make the decision not to proceed. Uh, it will serve the interests of the court. Uh, and it will serve the interests of the of trying to resolve the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. I do agree with McCall. It's not that the normalization process will necessarily stop, but I do think it is a it is a an obstacle that you know, the last thing we need when it comes to dealing with this conflict are additional obstacles we have to overcome. There's never a shortage of those. The last thing we need are new ones that make it harder. Thank you very much, Dennis. And uh, this concludes uh, the roundtable. I want to thank everybody uh, for participating and contributing. And uh, special thanks to the team who work on uh, putting this uh, together. Uh, Pascaline here and uh, Tammy Applebaum from uh, Elnet. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, I feel so much more.